Welcome back to my garage. So you've got your machine turned on and referenced. Now let's dive into the next lesson, learning the PathPilot interface. If this is your first time operating a CNC machine, you're in luck. You get to use the control software that many people, myself included, consider the easiest interface out there. In this lesson, we're going to briefly go through the different sections of the PathPilot interface. The goal here is to get you running your machine, not to make you an expert on PathPilot. That will come in time. First of all, let's take a look at the bottom half of the screen. These are the persistent controls. They stay on screen so you can access them at any time and from any tab. On the bottom left, you'll find program controls. The biggest button is cycle start, and that's used to run your program. More on these other buttons in a future lesson. The sliders allow you to adjust the feed rates and spindle speeds for your machine on the fly. F stands for feeds and controls the speed the machine will travel during cutting moves. This controls the rate of travel based on a percentage of the commanded speed. S stands for speed and controls the spindle speed adjusted as a percentage of the commanded speed. Velocity controls the max travel rate of the machine as a percentage of max rapid speed, similar to the governor on an engine. In the bottom middle, you'll find position details. This is all about the location of the spindle in relation to the workpiece in the X, Y, and Z directions. You've already used the reference buttons. You can also set zero, see your distance to go, and see which G codes are active. On the bottom right, you'll find the manual control group. This is where you can set the speed of the spindle and start and stop it, just like we did in the previous lesson. You can also call up different tools or set your tool number. This is also where you find controls for jogging and stepping and a toggle button to go between the two. So what's the difference between stepping and jogging? Stepping allows you to move one increment per move. Jogging is a continuous movement of the table or spindle. This allows you to do quick manual cutting like facing or cutting a shoulder. There are three different ways you can jog and step. You can use the keyboard, you can use the jog shuttle, or you can use an MPG or jog pendant. These are only available on the operator console. With the keyboard, the table is moved in the X axis by pressing the left or right arrow keys, the Y axis by pressing the up or down arrow keys, and the Z axis by pressing the page up or down buttons. The speed of the machine when continuous keyboard jogging is determined by the jog feed in the right hand side of the persistent controls. If you toggle step, it will only move the selected distance. And pro tip, if you hold shift and jog any of the axes, it will jog at the max jog speed. If you have a fourth axis on your machine, use the less than or greater than keys. The toggle button switches between step and continuous motion. With continuous selected, if you press and hold a key, the machine will continue to move until you let go. The second way to jog is to use a jog shuttle. First, you must select the increment and the axis. To step, rotate the intersection of the wheel. To jog, turn the outer ring. Be careful not to turn it too much. The speed is determined by how little or much you twist it. When stepping, the four buttons on the screen and at the top of the jog wheel allow you to specify the increment of movement. Each move can be a tenth of a thou, one thou, ten thou, or a hundred thou. In the CNC industry, thousands are referred to as thou, in case you've never heard of that. Now, if you notice, I have an operator console installed on this MX mill. The jog shuttle doesn't come with this configuration by default. This is just for demonstration purposes. If your machine has an operator console, you'll have one of these, a jog pendant. Before you use the jog pendant, you need to specify the axis and increment of movement using the dials on the top of the jog pendant. When moving close to the table, vise, or workpiece, I recommend keeping your moves small. So those are the persistent controls. Let's take a look at the top half of the screen. This is called the notebook section, and it has multiple tabs. The first tab is called main. You can view the G-code of your currently loaded program, and you can also see that program's toolpaths. Remember, this is the tab that must be open for you to start the spindle for manual operations. Next is the File tab. You can use this tab to load a program, edit G-code, or edit a conversational program. You can load programs from either a USB or from the PathPilot hub. Think of the hub as a cloud you can upload your files to that you can access from your machine. It's very handy. Moving on to the settings tab, here's where you can change options like the type of spindle you have or the type of probe you have. Most likely you'll be going to this tab when you're setting up new accessories or doing some troubleshooting. On the offsets tab, you can set or change the tool offsets and the work offsets. 
We'll go into more detail on this tab when we start setting up the machine in a future lesson. The conversational tab is magical. This is where you can create toolpaths right here at the machine. It's so intuitive. With a basic understanding, anyone can run simple parts using this tab. The ATC tab is where Tormach Mills gets serious about automation. Of course, this tab will only work if you have the ATC installed, but if you do, that will up your ability to make multiple parts without having to babysit the machine to switch out tools. With this tab, you can insert multiple tools into the spindle and assign a numbered location and then add the tool height with a tool setter. Once that's programmed in, you can have multiple tools complete multiple different operations while you go off and work on other machines. Let's get to my favorite tab, the probe tab. This is where you go to find integrated probing routines that will save you so much setup time. You can probe an edge, a corner, a pocket, a circular pocket, a boss, a circular boss. It's amazing. And you can also probe the Z height. I love this tab. The final tab is the status tab. Here you can view warning or error messages and see status lights for troubleshooting. You can also update PathPilot to the latest version. So that's a brief overview of PathPilot. You should have enough knowledge to keep moving forward in this series. If you want a deeper dive into the ins and outs of PathPilot, refer to your Mills operator manual. Tormach's website, YouTube channel, and forums have loads of great resources on PathPilot. That's all for this lesson. I'll see you in the next one.